cringing or being cringy isn't sinful, I don't mm-hmm. think, but like, <laughs> you know, I, I might have to go check the text for that. You're like, thou it shall not be Thou shall not cringe. <laughs> yeah, thou shall not be cringy. But it's like... <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast, Christian in Progress. My name is Samuel Perez, and just a little bit about myself. I am a former gay stripper. Yes, that's right. You heard that correctly. I left behind the homosexual lifestyle to walk with Christ. And this podcast is all about how I do it, why I do it, and to help others like me and educate those that are not like me. I want to talk, but I really want to talk about what a real life with Jesus looks like in 2023. Nothing is off limits, and I want to be as transparent as I possibly can be. Before we get started, I want to let everybody know that this podcast is completely free to listen to, and we do accept some donations. And we have some awesome rewards and gifts for those who want to become patrons of the podcast. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, click on the description down below and you'll find a link to becoming a patron of the podcast, which means you'll be making a regular monthly commitment. And we also have my website, SamuelAbrahamPerez.com or ChristianInProgress.org, where you can find resources to give through PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App. So on today's episode, if you didn't notice already, the video version, we've got the ultimate church tad, Josh Benson, who is a TikTok influencer and a finance bro. I didn't see that coming. Finance bro. Oh yeah, you didn't see that coming. The, The generic white guy does work in finance. You got through that intro very well. I can tell you've done that before. That was not the first time. I've, I've done that. Uh, I've that off. <laughs> I think this is my either 50th, 50th episode or uh, 51st episode. So I didn't know it's the 50th. Episode. Big yeah. anniversary. 50th. I think it's a big, big milestone. <laughs> Love this. <laughs> it's amazing. But okay, so I was just telling Josh how I came across Josh, which is how I come across like a lot of my guests is TikTok. Of course, I'm always on TikTok and I love scrolling through TikTok. And I just saw one of his, uh, you know, skip videos. So what Josh does is that he's on the internet. <laughs> you can probably like explain this better, but he makes these funny, like satire videos that relate to just like weird people in the church. And it's like, especially one of them being like a church chat, just someone who would approach you and just be like, you know, um, I just feel like you're my wife or, you know, just saying yeah. weird, crazy things. And so he's just so funny. And I really, really enjoy his content. And it's just like an honor to have him on this podcast. And I don't really know that much about you, bro. So I'm like excited to listen to like why you are even following Jesus. You told me that your testimony is a little bit bland, but yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we'll, we'll try to spice it up. But I mean, it, truthfully, in my testimony, like I, I grew up, parents like loved each other together, like perfect little you know home I guess you could say they had me in church like in diapers dog like I accepted Christ for the first time uh, when I was like six mm. uh got baptized Sully so Sarge Baptist for yeah yeah I don't even like six years old <laughs> I was about to say like when does the stream of consciousness start <laughs> it can't be six but you know, like grew up super Southern Baptist, like in church if the doors are open, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, you name it. Uh, as, as I got older, I, I think I realized or I thought that I didn't understand the gravity of accepting Christ. So then I got saved again when I was 15. And that's kind of the date that I count. Got baptized again, super saved, holy water, like all over the place. I, I might go for like the, the the trifecta. We'll call it the Trinity. I might do it again. Who knows? But growing up kind of with that and in that home, a big uh, priority for me was sports, big sports guy, right? Like baseball, football, basketball, white guy sports, white guy sports. And I grew up in a town just kind of like full of white people. And I went to a super small high school that was just like a bunch of white kids. And so they're like- In Texas, right? In Texas, yep. Mm -hmm. East Texas. And so they're like, if you're remotely athletic, you can play every sport. It was so great. You know what I'm saying? Baseball, football, (laughs) basketball. But that kind of became my life, I guess you could say. Uh, I was, if we're using like TikTok names, I, I was like Josh Benson, the athlete, like at least where I was from. Um, got a scholarship to play baseball. Uh, so I played baseball in college. And this is where things kind of went south, I guess you could say, or different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, kind of going for like this perfect mold of thinking I have it figured out. And yeah, I'm just going to be a baseball player. Like I'm going to, play college ball, like try to get drafted, like, you know, typical douchey white guy things. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And uh, I like, you're like, I'm about to be the best baseball player ever. I'm going to make it to the, what is it? NBA? uh, MLB. 
and I'll be, it will, you know, like I, yeah. I used to be gay, so I don't know anything about sports. Pick, pick a three letter acronym. It's so now you asked me about Barbies, and I can tell you about Barbies. Okay, <laughs> to, no, to, I hate the Barbie movie. Don't even mention the no Barbie that movie. feminist propaganda. <laughs> I didn't watch that. No, that feels like women directors. Absolutely not. No, no <laughs> chance. I do. That movie was so funny. My wife uh, had us go watch it. I thought Ryan Gosling was so funny. I uh, he's awesome. a good actor. It's it's he's a great. it's a good quality movie for sure. Quality. <laughs> But anyway, it's okay. Back to baseball. So, um, get a scholarship, and before I get on campus to, you know, fulfill my dream, I guess you could say, I, I tear my shoulder up like super bad. Um, it's like your labrum, uh, like ligaments attached to it, or whatever, just like whoosh, tore it. Ooh. Um, and I didn't like throw hard to begin with. And typically, like when you do this and you get surgery, you don't come back throwing as hard as you did. So I'm like throwing super slow. Um, Guys in the baseball world call it 80 poo. It was just so slow. I'm getting like, you know, people that I had played against and that I'm now maybe seeing in college, different teams that I would normally like dominate or be the guy. Mm. They're like taking me off the wall, right? They're like mm. knocking it over the fence. And so I get cut. Um, college coach is like, dude, you suck. See ya. You know, <laughs> lose the scholarship. I was like, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go, man. And it wasn't a great school to begin with. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to stay here. And then all of a sudden, my life is kind of in a, a flux. I'm like, you know, this whole time, I thought I was going to be this baseball player or have a life in baseball. This is in and college? This is in college. Okay. And that kind of led to a lot of, like, questioning God, like, testing my faith of, like, and it's so funny reflecting. That's not really, like, a traumatic experience. It's like, dude, you just can't play a sport now. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it, your whole identity is wrapped up in it. That exactly. can be very traumatic, 100%. It, 100%. Yeah. And, and so like to someone else, it's like, oh, it's just sport. But for me, that's just how like intertwined my identity was. It's like, I'm a baseball player and now I'm just like, who am I? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I ended up transferring from that college to go to school where my girlfriend at the time was going to school. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm like, well, I might as well just go here because, you know, I, I thought I had my life figured out. I was like, well, we'll get married. So might as well. Mm. So I get to- Wait, wait. How, how did that happen? Are you one of those guys to start, you know, Christian college? Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm just like a Christian, you know? So I'm like, oh, like, you know, I want to have sex. So I, I guess I better marry her at like age 21. And I, and we had always lived in separate towns. Uh, she was like a girl I dated my senior year of high school. So like high school sweetheart, you know, just made sense, right? Um, She was going to be a nurse, which I guess that means that she was like a bully in high school looking back. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> you know, she was... So I get to the college where she's going to school and it's January of 2016, right? She looks at me, we're 19. She's like, if you don't propose to me by the end of this year, we're breaking up. Oh, damn. And she knew what she wanted. She knew what she wanted. I remember being 19 and looking at my bank account. <laughs> just like leaving her, her crib that day being like, dang, I guess I got to get engaged. And then I was You're like, like, how am I going to buy this ring? Yeah. Like, what does she want? Like. Uh, you know, an absolute cubic zirconia move right here. But like I ended up leaving and then realized I'm like, oh, I guess I don't have to marry her. So then the only, I guess, point of stability in my life at the time, because I didn't know anyone at this college. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I break up with her and I'm like, all right, I don't have baseball. I don't have like this girl who I probably was mm. leaning on unfairly at the time, like looking back at it. And from there, it kind of like a God move. I, I, I just met some friends at the wreck one day who ended up being like crazy, like spirit filled dudes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At a great church, great community. And I think that's where I kind of started getting serious about my faith. Um, and even more so like my identity and kind of reshaping that of like, yeah, I guess like, you know, baseball was cool. Sports was cool, but like, this is who you are in Christ. And mm -hmm. you know, that chapter's closed, but like, we still got like our whole lives ahead of us. Yeah. And so from that point, I wish I could say that, you know, I was just a spirit filled guy and that, you know, I was just, you know, <laughs> preaching the gospel, you know, and everything. but I, I think from that point, it was a lot of just trial and error in me making about a billion and one mistakes, whether that's with women or how I like led college groups. Uh, mm -hmm. They, for some reason said, Hey, like, you like a Christian and you know enough, you want to like lead a college group with our church. And I was like, sure. Uh, and it was kind of like this balance of like being above reproach and like a leader with our church. And then also mm -hmm. 
like literally like hitting a chick out like what are you doing like friday night like i'm gonna come through you know what i'm saying that's why you're so good at doing this the the skit people don't realize it like i'm literally making fun of myself half the time because like, it's like oh, it's yeah. so accurate like you watch these tiktok you know skits and you're just like this guy like it's like either number one he's just had a ton of experiences with like the same dude over and over again or just like several people or like he really is this person <laughs> yeah let me think, like I there's no that. way you could come up with this it's like so accurate uh but that's funny I mean, it was like you, you literally lived it you're just like a horrible probably like a horrible leader at the time and just like learning trial and error <laughs> no a lot of mistakes man and if it wasn't me then it was like a buddy and we would make fun of each other a lot uh and that's kind of like where a lot of videos came from too but at least somehow aware 100 percent, very yeah. self-aware and somehow scraped through college i don't know how i graduated kind of in hindsight because i did not apply myself at all i think it's because i was like a, a kinesiology education major yeah which no offense to typical white privilege whatever you know that that's a whole other story but yeah so <laughs> graduated i just like so, have all these opportunities i don't know how they were handed to me you know so <laughs> just like it's not like i'm a handsome white guy you know <laughs> yeah, that happen? and then being in education classes i was one of the few guys and a lot of the girls would it would be like she's gonna be like a chemistry teacher or she's gonna be a man and they're like super smart so yeah. i would just play dumb because we'd be in groups i'm like ah uh, and they're like josh you just handle the the title slide you know for our presentation i'm like i'm <laughs> sick i can do that you know, so like we're not going to give you any type of responsibility, but I mean, but I mean, I know you're not dumb because especially to do comedy, like you have to be a very smart individual. And so there's a compliment for you <laughs> because thank like, you, thank you're you. very good at comedy, which means like you, you can't be dumb. Like dumb people can't do comedy. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, no, it's just the truth. Like you have to be so self-aware and you have to like really have an understanding of society and then twist that in a way to make yeah. it funny. And so that, that requires a lot of brain power. For sure. <laughs> So thank you, got you that. Man, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like to think that I'm not super dumb. Oh, uh, definitely I'm not a dumb Moist, but yeah, man. So graduated. And then it was even probably worse moving from like this community where um, I was a, a D bag in college and I'm still wrestling with, uh, you know, I guess being a 21 year old guy in college. But then I'm like, oh, like, uh, I want to follow the Lord. I graduate, start coaching because it's like what I thought I wanted to do. Realize I hate kids. So I'm like, well, I need to find another career path. And what do white men do best other than finance, I guess? So like, <laughs> pivoted, got a Wall finance Street. job. Wall Street, maybe, you know. So pivoted. It's all both of Wall Street one day. You're just like, I'm not like that. That's kind of sick, man. <laughs> I'm you on know? Margaret Robbie. Yeah, literally, like, that's it. What am I going to do? So pivoted, <laughs> got to finance. And then I moved away from, like, my college town where there was, like, accountability to uh, Dallas, and like, I'm like by myself for like the first time ever. And I think that looking back, there's like a pattern of me propping myself up on other things that made my identity. So it's like baseball, my girlfriend yeah. at the time, and then my community. I moved to Dallas. I'm like, I don't have a community. Mm. Um, and so for a couple of years, it was just me kind of like wilding out and feeling like extremely guilty. Mm -hmm. um, it, whether it's like, you know, I coworkers who are like my only friends at that time, like want to go out and like, the culture in finance is just like, hey, like, it's Friday. We don't have to work for two days. Let's go eat blasted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of like, course. Let's go to the club. Whenever, and then whatever repercussions follow, like, after that, whether it's, like, you know, women, whether it's drugs, like, you name it. Yes. So got into that, which was horrible. And I think it was just kind of a moment of COVID hits, still making those decisions, but then I'm starting to realize, like, this isn't the life that I want for myself because... At the time, I'm 24, 25. I'm seeing dudes that I work with who are 30s still doing the same thing. And I'm like, I don't know if I would oh, yeah. do this, you know? That's scary, yeah. And so then I wish I could say it was just like the the perfect uh, lifestyle that I think Christian TikTokers like to prove. Like, I just had a moment and I fell to my knees. And then, I, I, then from there, it was actually like an uphill battle of me being like, oh, I need to make like good decisions now. And, and, be serious about my walk with the Lord. And I'm still like wrestling with making the same poor decisions that I made in college, which is, is yeah. uh, more or less a reflection of my maturity. <laughs> but yeah, TikTok rolls around, uh, COVID hits, kind of really started getting serious about my faith. And then I guess that leads us to where we are today. I met my wife in 2021. Then that made me get even more serious. It's like, oh shoot, I, I have to, I can't even just leave myself. Now I have to lead a woman mm -hmm. and I don't even have it together. So 
<laughs> met my wife. You are Knopf. Yeah, <laughs> I have Knopf. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, am I Knopf? <laughs> uh, and, and, and my wife is like an absolute like superstar for the Lord. So like it, just having her in my life is awesome. And we've been married since April of 22. And now we've got a kid on the way, man. So it always be the ladies. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, re they really are the helper. Like you literally like, it's so funny because I hear a lot of Christian guys talk about this. It's like making poor decisions with women. And it's like, you know, I like stringing this girl along and I know I don't even take her seriously. Mm. And then I meet my wife and I'm like, dog, what am I doing? Like I, I cannot lean this woman. I couldn't handle this woman, you know, being like this. And so it certainly makes you kind of like get buttoned up pretty quick. You know, you're like, yes, I got to get my stuff in order. So yeah, man. That led us yeah. to where we are today. Still, I wish I could say now the perfect, you know, I've got my wife and I just fell to my knees and mm -hmm. still wrestling with like poor decisions that I make, uh, yeah. whether it's now, you know, how like maybe I like even talk to my wife or like uh, poor decisions that I make like in leading our family and stuff. So mm. it's just an uphill battle, man. But That's uh, so real. I yeah. love that. Dude, I love that. You know why? Because uh, especially this podcast called Christian in Progress. Yeah, yeah. So we, we literally are in progression. It's just not this instantaneous thing that just happens to us. I mean, there's definitely some miraculous things that the Lord can do to our character, to our spirit, but it really is just like <laughs> an uphill battle, you know, the climb by Miley Cyrus. And so that's, that's what we're doing. You know, we, we're literally like, just like climbing up, um, and going up this mountain with the Lord. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. You're never, man. you're never finished. Like you're, you're never until the day we get in glory, man. It's just like. Yeah, work in progress. Big yeah, time. and I could see that for myself because, especially w coming from my testimony, my background is all, everybody in the charismatic church it, or in most churches, just like, oh, you know, you come to God and then just like, you know, you're a brand new person, which yeah. is true in the spirit, yes. But then, like, we're, we're still we still have flesh, you know. We're still, yeah, I'm still physically literally wrestling with this, and then you've got like Satan in your ear too, like, hey, wouldn't it be kind of sick if you like blah blah? So like yeah. two thirds of the books. <laughs> is that still, how Satan like, sounds? <laughs> Yeah, like blah, 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 blah. This is like no. a gangster, like, hey, wouldn't it be sick? He's, he's another finance bro. Like, <laughs> dog, wouldn't it be so sick? It's like, yeah, that does sound kind of sick. So yeah, like two thirds of your input is already like not on your side. And then you got Christ. So it, 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 this, the Holy Spirit, I've found it to be like a very soft, like you have to be still, you know, to hear it. Yes. So if you're like listening to the noise, that is not the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yes. big work in progress. Yeah, I love that. But you know, like I said, it's real and it's true. And, um, and I think, that's more of a testimony. And I always say this all the time. It's like, when I read the word of God, it says, pick up your cross daily. It doesn't say I pick yeah. up my cross like once and then like I'm Gucci now, you know, I'm, I'm blind. Yeah. It's, it's something that I have to work on every single day. Um, so how did you get started even on TikTok making skits or did you always know that you were like incredibly funny? <laughs> <laughs> I always liked to think I was funny, I guess. But again, like when you go to a high school with like 80 kids, it's it's like not hard to like stand out because it's like either you or like the guy that like his truck is his whole personality. So it's like, all right, I, I think I can beat this guy, you know? Um, the country music, bro. Yeah, yeah literally like it, it, that's the only I'm thing. I'm rolling with my tractor. <laughs> literally. So it's not hard, right? Uh, but I, I, I think looking back to and talking to my wife, I got to realize like, oh yeah, I'm kind of an attention whore uh, and a bit of a narcissist, you know? But COVID aren't we all in this world? I mean, I'm glad you can admit it because we all are. Like it's like everything is about us. I mean, essentially. <laughs> it's just like we're just like that, you know? Literally. Like I am the main character, right? And, and yes. Uh, yes, yes. Like, main I character vibes. <laughs> so yeah. So COVID hits, super bored, and I really picked up two habits in COVID. One is golf, mm -hmm. and I still suck at golf, but I love golf so much. That's such a white thing. Uh, I know. I'm just really feeling this too right now. <laughs> right now. All right. So love golf, but I picked up TikTok and was just making kind of some funny videos. My first videos actually, Samuel, how old are you? 27. Okay. 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 So you were here for Vine. You were here for Vine. I'm 27 also. So. Oh, you are? Okay. I thought you yeah, were yeah. younger. Okay. No, I'm 27. Uh, when Vine came about, there was this page that I followed that it was this guy who would just do like the point of view from like a bread piece of bread doing daily activities <laughs> what? and it was always to um lionel richie like the saxophone song like the da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so my first 20 tiktok videos were me just like filming behind a piece of bread doing daily activities uh, like bread 
TV's got Netflix and, and it's like the caption's just Netflix and chill. Ha ha. Um, didn't really take off, if you can't imagine yeah, that. Top tier. Top I'm, tier. I, I was wow. laughing making these. What a nobody idea. I love that. Just like, okay, POV bread. <laughs> bread. It's just a slice of bread going through daily. I spent so much money on bread. I was picturing a loaf. I'm sorry. No, not a whole loaf. We just got a slice, little slice. But we, we went through so much bread. Like my roommates at the time were pissed because they're like, where's our bread going? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we don't know where where it's at. <laughs> um, but yeah, did that, didn't take off. And then I made a video with myself and it was actually making fun of a buddy of mine from college. He, he was kind of like the granola Christian guy. I got my guitar, you know, mm -hmm. and it just blew up overnight. Didn't see it coming. And he texts me. I think he's about to like chew me out. And he's like, dude, I hate you for making that. But he's like, don't let that be it. He's like, this is obviously a niche. People like care about this. We have the experiences. And so probably was him. He knew it was ill. Big time. <laughs> big time. When I threw the beanie on, like he was like, because he would always wear a beanie and he had this guitar. He knew it was hell. Uh, and I did not deny it one bit. I was like, yeah, you know, big dog. That's <laughs> but he was like so supportive. And it's like people commenting on the video. It hit like 400,000 views overnight. And people are like, oh, you know, this guy for sure exists in Idaho or Connecticut. And I'm like, oh, this guy's just everywhere. Yeah. And that kind of just like birthed Church Chad. Church and making these satirical videos, poking fun at you should be added, you know, a very successful franchise, a franchise. Um, that can go into series, movies, you know, on SNL. And yeah. If you know about SNL, but oh, they have these, uh, these, these, um, staple characters that is just like once in a lifetime character that anytime they do it, it's just like the best of the best. That's like what you created. On yeah, TikTok. yeah. Literally like you created the church, Chad, that everyone knows everyone like loves slash hates. Yeah. And now you can do all these funny videos with it. And and you've expanded that even more so. Like the now you've you've got like um, you know, baseball coaches and like yeah, pastors and all these things that, that you're doing. And even uh, one of the, you know, I love controversy. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so we're gonna go into controversy. Yeah, yeah. So I saw this, I just knew it was gonna piss off a bunch of people. But it was funny, it was funny. It was the uh the girls podcast that you did. Yeah. It was like the coffee podcast. What did you name it? Uh, if it was the one I'm thinking, it literally is called the Jesus and Coffee Podcast. Like it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you and I think, uh, maybe another girl or a guy, I don't know, mm -hmm. but you're pretending to be a girl and you're doing this coffee podcast, Jesus thing, the thing yeah. we, we've all seen in church. And I just thought that was so funny. But the, the comments, when I checked the comments, people were so offended <laughs> and, and the comments is like, girls are like, but we're not actually like this. You know, we, we don't, don't actually, actually do this. this. <laughs> No, like, no, look at your Instagram. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> like Rebecca, please. Like, please. like yeah. your entire personality is about coffee. Who are like, you trying to fool right now? We we've got you honed in right now. <laughs> like just just accept it. Just like yeah. just love yourself. <laughs> That's who you are. <laughs> like, How do we deal with like um because there there's 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 probably some backlash to that of just like oh for sure always making fun of people in the church and stuff like that. How do you deal with the backlash? Do you get embarrassed like when you go to church and stuff? Like when people meet you, are they like, are you gonna make me into a character? <laughs> that's happened a couple times i i used to kind of obsess over the comments a little bit because it's like you know i want people to perceive me some type of way now and my wife has helped me with this a ton now it's a little better of just being like i'm not too bothered by it yeah. especially if you're someone that i haven't really like given like authority to to kind of like talking about because there's people that i have that like hold me accountable for like videos that i post there's a couple in the drafts that will never see the light of day. Oh man, I would love to see them. <laughs> so funny, but it's either my wife you're gonna or send or those to me after. I can send them a couple. <laughs> if they're like, you can't post this. You know, like, that's too much. Uh, or like ideas of like, no. You know, I've seen some of your videos and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, this guy went for it. You know, yeah, yeah. but it's so funny. So I can't imagine those. <laughs> well, that's that's good comedy. Like at the end of the day, good comedy, whether it's Christian comedy or even take it to like someone who isn't Christian, like a. I don't know, like a Dave Chappelle, Bill, Bill, uh, oh gosh, what's the guy, Bill Burr, Bill Burr type? Yeah. It, it's always like pushing the envelope of what is acceptable to say. Okay. And obviously with Christianity, we have to rein that in. Like there's a lot yes. of cursing and it, it's a little less, but like, if you're not pushing the envelope, then like Christian humor would still be us just kind of like saying, you know, like, Hey, see, you speaking of the book of numbers. I noticed I didn't have yours and oh, that's no, we giggle. <laughs> that's so funny. But it's like. 
we'd still be stuck there if we didn't at least try to push the envelope and yeah. be like self-aware of like who we are kind of as a, as a culture. Yeah. I mean, not to rag on like, you know, like streaming companies, Christian streaming companies, and we see these movies that are just so, yep. you know, cringe and God's not, yeah, we got, 14. we got, yeah. <laughs> God's not dead 57. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The return it's like we God. must put a stop to this. Like at some point, yeah. you know, <laughs> like Jesus is looking down. He's like, okay, it's right. It's rapture time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we we've got to we got to put a stop to this. So we got two B style like movies. I don't know if you've seen these two B like movies. Uh, the uh, standing service. No, I can't say I have, but it's I can only really imagine awful. if they're like that. It's it's like I don't know, like student films or something. Like they have yeah. to be, but it's like a legit streaming service. That's what you know. Some of the Christian content looks like nowadays, and I'm I'm glad that you know people like you are doing comedy. And I thought it would be such an incredible idea. Like, oh my gosh, like. Instead of making, you know, God's Not Dead 57, like, let's yeah. give Josh a show. Let's, let, you know, he's good at this. Like, he's like, he can make it skit. Like, like an, like an SNL Christian, like, how funny would that be? And then that's something we haven't seen before. It's something, you know, yeah. pushing the envelope. And comedy is always ahead of its time, too. What someone finds, like, super offensive today. Like, I'm, the videos you made in 2020, like, looking back at those videos, like, oh, this is tame. And the videos that you're making now are like, whoa, Very you know? <laughs> Absolutely. It, like treading, it, filling out the waters. And now it's like expanding and being like, and also like truth is stranger than fiction. Like just seeing things that happen in our everyday world being like, that's horrible that that pastor did that. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to be hilarious to make fun of, you know, yeah. and to your point, it's, it, you're exactly right. It's just like, we've got to keep on pushing the envelope to see, I guess, how far we need to go to be funny, you know, to bring humor to this. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it brings joy, you know, it, it really Absolutely. does. Like there's, things that people just don't talk about that happen in the church and and to really expose that and to make people self-aware because I think there's a lot of people who are not aware. Um, and that's that's what I do too, you know, and, and bring it back to me because I'm a narcissist. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I make my YouTube videos, you know, like that's, I want to push the envelope. Like I'm like, yeah. okay, what do, you know, Christian conservatives hate the most? You know, they hate gay people and they hate drag queens. And so like, let's mix that. And put it on a YouTube channel. Let's teach the Bible through that. Yeah. <laughs> and put it on like wigs and costumes. A lot of people like they just don't understand. Like it's it's purpose purposeful. Like I'm like, I'm a jock. I go to the gym. I lift like I've got muscles, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm not like that character that you see online. I have to I had I had to tone it down now for people to even take me seriously. But the yeah. reason I did it was because I was like, let's do something that nobody has ever done before to reach a group of people that have never been reached before. Yep. You know, and even people who have departed from the faith that have experienced, you know, the church chads in yep. their religion, they look at you and they and they laugh and they're like, wow, this guy is, this guy's really funny. And like they, and, and you bring them joy. And then they're like, maybe I might want to reconsider my relationship yeah. with Jesus because like, oh, this, this didn't just happen to me. And so there's like yeah. a, like a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel. But speaking about, you know, your testimony, one of the things that right off the bat you were talking about um, was I just, I, I, I noticed identity. Like I, yeah. identity loss, and this is so common, especially with males in our generation. Um, and it's funny you're 27 because I was like, no wonder I like your comedy so much. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> millennial such as you. Um, but yeah, identity is something that's just really, really lacking. Um, not just for you, but for a lot of guys. You know, all these finance bros, whoever it may be, even you go yeah. into same sex attraction with with me too. Identity, identity. Um, how did you combat that? Now, like, like finding fulfillment and identity with the Lord, like who, because mm -hmm. you know, your TikTok name is Josh Benson, the rapper, yeah. but that's not your identity. So right. who is Josh Benson? Yeah. It, and I think to your point, like combating that, it, because it's still, it's like we talked about, it's just like an uphill battle. Like if a video pops off, all of a sudden I'm like feeling myself. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, maybe, you know, the chest is out a little bit and it's like, you know, babe, you see this video, you know, I'm bad, you know, <laughs> And then the identity is very much so like, oh, I'm like, I'm a social media presence or whatever. And I think it's re having to realize like daily, honestly, like, and get to a point where it's like, if TikTok, you know, gets banned or like, which is somewhat yeah. realistic, it's like, I have to be okay with who I am. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to be okay with like who I am in Christ and the life that he's like put before me and like the obligations that I have. Yeah. Uh, and so- Again, that's like a daily battle. Like it, there's some days if they like delete TikTok, I'd be furious. And then other days I'm like, yeah, man, like if it goes away, so what? Like we had fun with it and now we're here. So that's it, kind of what it is, is just detaching to the point where it's like, I'm happy that it's here, but like if it's gone, 
So yeah, we had fun with it. Great ride. Do you feel like you have really become a leader, especially like in your marriage and in your relationship now? Like, have you, like what are some aspects of your growth that you're like, I didn't know how to do this before. Like, how are you a leader now? I think I'm a, this is marriage that taught me this. Mm. I didn't realize how horrible I was at communicating, uh, really in conflict. Like, I thought I was so great at communication. Like, you know, bef before I meet my wife, like hinge profile, obviously like letting people know how great I am at like communicating and all that. <laughs> uh, and then we get married and like our communication and conflict, it's just me like getting upset mm -hmm. and like having to like remove myself from situations and like then trying to just throw a rug over it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, do you use like humor as well in those moments? Like certain yeah, and, as I'm in humor. Yeah. But, and see what, when we're fighting and if I, if I feel really jaded, then I, I'm a horrible person. And I like use humor, <laughs> but it's like jaded and like pointed towards my wife and she loves that. It's the best. But, <laughs> you know, going she's about to, like, ready to throw a dish at your head. You know, she's, she's about ready to give me a black eye. If you see me with a black eye, you know, just know I talked back. I deserved it, you know. But it, literally, like, it, it's doing that. And then we go to therapy, a uh, couples therapy. And then after that, I'm, like, going to individual therapy. And I'm just realizing, like, yeah, I, like, suck with my communication. Mm -hmm. And it, like, stemmed from even, like, a perception of self to a certain degree of, like, you know, if I do something wrong and we're in conflict, like, oh, woe is me. And then I'm like insecure. So I think that's been a big thing because I, I do feel a lot more confident now uh, being a leader in my marriage. And then ipso facto, that being kind of something that's online of being mm -hmm. able to like articulate better, not getting so like insecure and then instantly like having to fire back if someone's being some type of way, but being able to kind of be more level headed. You'll probably see me in the comments tomorrow being like a douchebag. It, like we say, work in progress, but I'm a lot more confident there now than probably a year ago. I don't think I've ever seen you post anything horrible in comments, so that's good. <laughs> good. We're off to a good start then. <laughs> or you just deleted it before you yeah, yeah. saw it. <laughs> Literally, like, like, oh, yeah, reflection time. Get rid of that instantly. Yeah, no, it, it's it's crazy. You know, I think, like, especially when it comes to men, that is something that just like the enemy is targeting so much mm -hmm. nowadays. Is like, who are you? And um, speaking about the Barbie movie, you know, I did a whole video about that. Um, Christian conservatives ate it up. <laughs> <laughs> they loved every minute of it because I was ragging on it. Yeah. No, but it was true because I was like, I don't like this film because this film is basically just telling men that, you know, they don't have an identity and that they should be OK with not having an identity. And um, and that women should, you know, take the place of men and, and not all that other stuff. And I'm like, yes, there's a place for equality. There's a place for women. There's also a place for men. Yeah. Um, and, and both are equal, but, you know, different respective roles. And so um, nowadays in our society, that is so combat, you know, yeah. combated. Um, just every man feels so insignificant and uh, and rightfully so, because, I mean, for for years we, we had the upper leg, you know. Of course. Yeah. And uh, and we did horrible things with it, you know. Yeah. Um, but then again, it's like this is not eye, an eye for an eye, you know, uh, that's not going to fix things. But um, just men are so targeted in, in today's day and age. And, and I hate to see it um, because what should be a very healthy component in our church of just like men being these incredible leaders, um, that's not what we're seeing, you know, and you basing your skits on all of these flaws that are, yeah. are really coming from men, a little bit of women, but men, um, it, it, it's funny, but it's like, it's the truth. Like men yeah. don't really have an identity. Like they go into college, they get married right away. Or, you know, um, all they care about is marriage or sex or, you know, golf. <laughs> yeah. So they make those things their identity. Um, and I think the Lord really wants to combat that in our generation. I was like, what does it look like to be a man? Because, and, and that's something I focus on for sure in my ministry. I've had to relearn that because I'm like, I'm over here. Like I voted for Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't vote for Trump. You know, I was, I was <laughs> like, I was a gay feminist. You know, I loved all things women. And um, I was like, yes, the Barbie movie, uh, old yeah. Oh, he would have ate that up. Like, he would have loved that. Um, but <clears throat> I had to learn what does it mean to be a man? And and how can I step into uh, my leadership as a man? Yeah. And so I think uh, just like bringing that back to the Lord, like the Lord can show show us how to do that. And that's going to be that trial and error. And communication is a huge part of that. That's what I think men, yeah. men do not know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, dude. Not at all. Do you have a skit about that? <laughs> that might be the next one of the hopper. That sounds like a... I, the guy that thinks after the prosperity gospel here. one please yeah okay yeah we need to do a prosperity one my buddy sent me one a video today of some 
pass around like Louisiana, just being like, I got the biggest house in Louisiana. You know, I'll pay <laughs> cash for it. And, I, and I'm like, what are you like? Like, what's the sermon on today? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like what are we just supposed to be talking about? But no, my yeah, my favorite cool. ones is uh, um, I I love making fun of Christian culture because it's like it's just so easy. You know, it's it we made it so easy, so predictable, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm like, no wonder people are deconstructing. That's something we can talk about too. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, because it's like, oh my gosh, like the other day I, I I tweeted something that was like I saw this thumbnail. I was just like, you know, this charismatic pastor, and the thumbnail was um something along the lines of can can demons tell us our future are aliens a part of you know f uh, this this future prophetic insight or something I'm like alien demons like i'm like what the heck like i'm like if i were a christian i wanted to learn about the bible and then i put in like oh you know like a, a cute little bible study the first thing that comes up is alien demons like i'm like what the heck like <laughs> like wearing cowboy hats you know like i'm like i just want to learn about the bible <laughs> yeah yeah like what, 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 what's going on here and that's like the most popular thing and it's so easy just make fun of that it's just like why are we at this level that is just so embarrassing well it's like identity right like at the end of the day like it, like we're talking about the barbie movie we're talking about that it, it's like we're no longer like content with being christian mm -hmm. right and to your point so like you know the barbie movie and kind of its its message towards men i can see what you're saying but also the flip side of that is that there's men who probably felt really threatened because their identity isn't in christ but it's mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just such the the leader of this, this, and that to a point of where it's like, no, you're not a leader. You're just kind of like super narcissistic and like yeah. you don't like lead well in your marriage or like your church, or whatever. And then the flip side, no longer can do we see at times like women being content with like I'm a Christian woman, but it's like, you know, I'm and I don't think there's like anything at its core definition wrong with being a feminist, but like mm -hmm. like an overly feminist to the point of like where like you know, God is a, a, a woman or like trying to communicate things that mm -hmm. are empowering to that rather than to your point, just like empowering what the Bible says, you know? Yeah. And so it's like a whole lot of identity issues of like, oh, I'm like a, a liberal Christian or I'm a conservative Christian. It's like, mm -hmm. just be a Christian and yeah. take the Bible for what it's worth. And you can have like hobbies, but don't mix it in with your, your alien demons. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do it. Yeah. What do you think about this culture? This is like an out-of-pocket question. Oh, I just gosh. recently saw, um, this is going to be so bad. I recently saw a podcast of like these two girls and they're like, they're very pretty. Okay. Like even yeah. for me, I'm not, I'm not attracted to women in that way. I'm like lustfully. Um, <laughs> that's a problem. But um, I'm like, these girls are so pretty and they're talking about the Bible. But then I'm just like, is this quality? Like, I'm like, I, I don't know. I thought it was, I, I thought it was very interesting. Like, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen it. It's like these these two girls and and then they just like they mix the world with like with Christ and then you go on their yeah. Instagram profile and it's like one Bible verse and just like you know mini skirts and all this stuff and I'm like, is this the standard? Is this what we're shooting for? Like I think I think th I think it's both you know because we've got yeah. like the crazy conservative like you know charismatic just like religious alien demon prophecy, um and then we've got like too much of the world that is just yeah. like. It's like, oh, you're mixing a little bit too much of Jesus into something that, you know, really shouldn't mix in with that. Yeah. There's just like so much crazy stuff happening in the world. But the comedy, going back to you, the comedy of everything that you're doing, I think is really needed because it helps us to question, like, are we doing the right thing? Like, are we yeah. really following the Bible the way that we should be following the Bible? And so I think that, that that's important to me. That's what captured my attention the most. And that's what I do on my channel. I'm like, I'm always going to bring it back to the Bible, but I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to threaten people in, in, in ways that make them uncomfortable, um, to, for them to question, huh, why does that make me uncomfortable? Even with your yeah. videos, like people will watch your videos be like, I'm really threatened by this. You know, like yeah. I have a guitar and I like to sing to women for <laughs> four hours. Yeah. What's for four hours? That? Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention the Barbie movie. That's literally what's literally just <laughs> referencing the Barbie movie again. Yeah. No, but it's literally like, I always say like. I mean, you, you kick a dog, it's going to bark. And if, if my videos offend you, odds are you're in them. Mm. Um, I saw a story the other day. I can't remember what pastor posted this, but I know it was a pastor, so it has some credibility because I, I trust the guy. Uh, I don't follow up pastors that I don't trust. But he was like, <laughs> Did Jesus, Jesus wasn't corny. We look at like just how like Jesus interacted with people in the Bible. And I'm sure he was like very hated by the Pharisees. Yeah. But people weren't like, interacting with him on like your kind of corny basis i guess you could say yeah but we take it to christian culture today there are people in christian culture that are corny and i think first things first people hear like you know are you calling me corny you must hate me and it's like no mm. 
I don't think your corniness is a sin by any stretch. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also like you are putting things out there on a public platform. How can you expect to not have some humor around it if you are going to be yeah. this corny? Because your corniness isn't a Christ-like trait. Yeah. It's just kind of like who you it's are, cringe. which is fine. It's cringe and it's fine. There's no cringing or being cringy isn't sinful, I don't think. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I might have to go check the text for that. You're like, thou with shall not be cringy. Thou shall not cringy. Yeah, thou shall not be cringy. But it's like... <laughs> You know, your your cringiness also reflects back on people like you and I. Mm. And I feel like saying this, it sounds like I'm trying to like prop myself up on myself on some shoulders. And that's not the case because I'm get on your soapbox, so Josh. Yeah. <laughs> but when people see, you know, this cringy, you know, whatever content that kind of what we've talked about doesn't reflect like a true walk with Christ. Like we're talking about like picking your cross up daily and like yeah. it's difficult. And it's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And being able to like articulate that is what I believe like really makes Christ so attractive is that yes. we're not sitting here, you know, maybe like another religion where it's like you send like harsh punishment or what have you, Christ, the way he interacts with us. But it's like your cringiness reflects back on us and the world sees that and they go, that's how all Christians are. I don't want to be like that because now they've also been like, oh, well, I guess all of Christianity is cringy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I got those majority. It's, it's just, no, but that's so true. Yeah. That's, and, and you know what? I think something that also strikes me from you as well is just how much of an open book you are, even transparent. Like sometimes I do these podcasts, bro. And, uh, and I had, I invite guests and I, I tell them, you know, right off the bat, first thing I do is like, I tell them, Hey guys, you know, I have this podcast and, uh, when you're on, you know, I want you to be transparent. I want you to open up. I yep. want you to talk about these real things. And it just like, I've had to like not release certain podcasts because I'm just like, this was such like, this was just like an image, you know, like this was like, yeah. there was nothing real here. You know, I, I, yeah. I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go further. Like, have you seen, <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off. Have you what? seen like the, uh, the duet this, if you're a Christian and it's like the AI voice and it's like, put a finger down if you have like whatever. <laughs> and there's some, and it's like, put a finger down if you struggle with like cussing and like <laughs> none of them ever put a finger down. Cause they're like, no, no, put a finger down if you if you struggle to get in the word every day. And they're like, no, not me, not me. And it's like, like for real though, like not satire. Yeah, no, they're being for real. And I'm like, shut <laughs> up. Like maybe you don't struggle with, you know, the words you speak. I do. I have to tame the tongue sometimes. But like, it's just so these things. It's like this is about your image. This is yeah. about God. This isn't encouraging people. It's like, uh, put a finger down if you're you know, haven't sinned in the last month. Oh, I haven't, you know, like, <laughs> shut up, shut up. It reflects the Bible too, because it's like yeah, yeah. John, John says, you know, I think the first John is like, if anyone says that they are without sin, they are a liar, you know? Exactly. And, um, and that's something that I had to come to, uh, just being comfortable with was, um, sharing that online for, with everyone, you know, um, just being like, look, like I came to God and I still have same sex attraction. And every day I pray for that to go away and I'm hoping for that to go away and yeah. I believe in miracles. And, you know, and, and, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know if God wants me to have a family or not. He wants me, you know, to be a uh, celibate, you know, I would love to have a family, but I struggle with porn. I struggle with this. I struggle with, you know, cursing sometimes like one time, <laughs> one time I was giving my testimony in a, uh, <laughs> I think it was a uh, middle school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I was talking about like my experience as a stripper and I was yeah. like, I was like, why would you even want to invite me <laughs> to, to your school? Like, I was like, you know, my testimony is about me yeah. being a stripper in New York city. I was like, are you sure I could talk about this with these kids? They're like, yeah, yeah. I talk sure. about it all. I'm like, I'm like, okay. You got it. <laughs> um, but I was talking about just like, <clears throat> uh, stuff that was going on, you know, <laughs> in the strip club with these middle schoolers. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm not trying to get into it. I was like, there was some freaky ish, you know, and I said the word like if you have the classroom and I was like, so mortified, just so embarrassed. Like, I'm like, I promise I'm holy. <laughs> I promise I, I know the Lord. <laughs> and I was, I was mortified, you know, just like in front, in front of the kids, in front of the teachers. And I was like, um, it just slipped out, you know, I was like, I struggle, you know, I struggle. There's, there's aspects of my life, you know, media, they, they all these things that you were talking about, the devil, flesh, you know, these things that come against us. Um, but if we advertise that and we do it in a real transparent way, I think that's one of the reasons why you've gone viral, but yeah. I've gone viral. People see that. They realize true, sees true, real, sees real. 
And that makes it easier for people. Like I don't, this tomfoolery that Christians have bought into. Tomfoolery. (laughs) Yes. The buffoonery. These Uh, shenanigans. (laughs) That Christians have bought into of just like this idealized version of just something that's just, it's not real. And I think some people, they want to live in that fantasy because and to not live in that fantasy would, would mean to face reality. It's like, oh, this is hard. Like life is hard. And, you know, God comes through for uh, a majority of different things, but other things he's going to have to walk with me through that. And, and a lot of people don't want to hear that. Brother, is this one time (laughs) I was in a, I was worshiping at a church and this, this Karen, she came up to me. And, um, and she's like, I just want to, I want prayer. Can you please pray for me after I got done with my set? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, what would you like for me to pray for you? And she was like, um, she's like, well, I have seen this beautiful house at the end of the block. It is huge, you know, three stories. I just love this house. I just know that God really wants me to have this house. And so could you pray for me, for me to have this house? And I looked at the lady, like, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, no. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Bro, just go check your bank account. What you asking God I, In my mind, I'm just like, no. Like, I'm like, uh, I mean, sure, if you, you, you know, if you really want that to happen. But instead of asking the Lord, you know, can I have this? Why don't, why don't you just ask him, can I have your will, Lord? And so I, I responded to her and I told her, hey, you know, um, let's, uh, let's pray for God's will. How about that? And yeah. she's like, no. <laughs> she told me no. She's like, I want you to pray for my house. I was like, this yeah. is, I can't believe. So I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I went down in prayer and then I was just like, I prayed for God's will. And I think it goes back to that. You know, it's just like, I don't want to face reality. I want to buy into this idea of what I want Christianity to be for me. Like God yeah, is yeah. transactional. And so whether that's to remove struggles, I don't want to talk about, you know, the porn that I watch. I don't want to talk yeah. about, you know, the cussing that I do or, you know, whatever, keep it PG-13. Um, I, I want to live in this fantasy world of just like this image that I put on and how you and me and a lot of other people, our creators on TikTok are combating that. It's really beautiful yeah. and, and keeping it real. But I really want to talk to you about this. So, okay, Harry, let's go. so you talked to me about uh, a little bit about charismatic churches. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a pretty charismatic guy only because I obviously believe in the gifts of the spirit. Um, and I just love the way people express themselves, no matter how yeah. weird it is. I, I, I have plenty of- I agree. I agree. I, I love like creativity and expressing yourself 100%. I agree with you there. What kind of, um, like what kind of church do you go to? Like, do you, what kind of community are you comfortable with that? You know, you feel like this is not cringe. I like this. I, I'm very like non-denominational, but also keep in mind, I grew up very Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Um, so charismatics now we're a little better, but like growing up, dude, like, so I, I've like never spoken in tongues. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, you're not saved. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, well, wrap, let's wrap it up. I got to go break, you know. <laughs> like, I've never personally spoken in tongues. I probably couldn't recall, at least in person times, that I've heard people speak in tongues. Uh, yeah. And and I think that charismatics do get a bad rap because, I'll say this, the charismatic community has more faith than probably the rest of, like, we could call it, like, Baptist or not denominational Christians combined. For I sure. think charismatics tap into like having faith so well, but then also kind of as is the issue with like I think was it Bethel where like the pro yeah. family's kid yeah. died and they're like trying to pray that the kid comes and it's like yes hey I think God has imparted His will here you know yeah I think we should always like a, a good balance is okay look healing yes going back to that yeah we're always gonna pray for healing that's something Absolutely. the Bible encourages us to do you know. Um, but then also just remembering that, Hey, if, if, if this doesn't happen, I still serve the Lord regardless, Absolutely. you know, um, it's the delusional people who are just like, um, do you remember there's a girl on TikTok and, um, I'm sure she was very popular. Um, <laughs> very, very popular. popular. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, she, she was like, I don't sin. Do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and she was yeah, like, just yeah. so everyone was like in the comment section, like, girl, like, this is not it. Like, mm-hmm. like she's like, mm-hmm. I don't sin. Like, the Bible says that I've been renewed and I don't sin and I don't struggle with sin. And that was like her whole thing. And we've we've seen just like a bunch of people that have just like raised up to to do that. Like, it's just like, yeah. you know, the other there, there was males, you know, who were just like, I'm without sin. And, and that's how cults are. Sure. Yeah, that's literally like we're. <laughs> 
a couple of steps away from drinking the punch at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's literally. There's just so much yeah. weird stuff happening. You know, it's like if we were just, that's why I got so into just like Bible teaching because yeah. I was really confused myself. I, I grew up in Baptist. I also mm -hmm. grew up charismatic. So I got a little bit of both and I've been able to okay. see both sides. And so with the Baptist, it was like, they got no, like sometimes they have no faith, you know, no faith in, in, in the spirit. They don't, they don't want to go there. Like I remember growing up and thinking that God doesn't speak, you know, that he's not mm -hmm. actively speaking to people, um, that, you know, it was just the word of God and that's it. Um, and, and being scared that if, if I felt like I heard from God that, oh, that, that, you know, that's Satan. Yeah. I've been, I've been demonically possessed. <laughs> yeah. And so now, um, and then going to the charismatic church where it's just like, it's too much of just, you're, you're going into wild regions that the Bible does not want us to explore, you know, yeah. like the, the whole alien thing, you know, alien. Well, it's, it's the happy medium, right? It's like yes. where Southern Baptists probably under spiritualize uh, yeah, the charismatics at times tend oh, to over spiritualize and it's like 100%. you know if you do this it's demonic um there's one guy I, I won't say his name but like he just gives me free content and i like <laughs> just patching his videos you're like, like follow subscribe yeah. no he blocked me so i have to like i have a burner that i like check just to see if he's <laughs> post anything blast but he'll just be like you know if you you know even take a sip of alcohol you're demonically possessed you know those are demons entering your body if yeah you um e even if you aren't partaking in yoga with like a Hindu mindset or whatever, even if you're just stretching, but you call it yoga, you're demonically possessed and you're calling that his <laughs> demons and all these things. And it's like, shut up, you know, yeah. like it, it, things out of context. So out of context and, 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 and answer, a lack of education too. lack of education. And the answer is usually as with most things, use your discernment, you know, yeah. as a, as a follower of Christ, you within yourself have discernment with the Holy spirit. Yeah. If you're going to like, drink and you're like getting blackout when you go, Hey, discerning time, let's stop drinking. You know, like you probably are, but, but it's just stuff like that. It's the happy. You probably do have demons. <laughs> yeah. Like you literally, you got something going on, you know, like if you're, if you're going to yoga and you know, they're starting to just chant weird things in a different like, Hey, maybe we don't go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we don't go to that yoga session anymore, you know, <laughs> but even like the common sense with that just seems not that common at mm. times. And it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> So, yeah, I think, I think when it comes to just those convictions and, and sin in general, and we've got, I mean, in our generation, I feel bad for our generation. Um, why I feel bad? Because they're so exposed to so much information and anybody can have a platform nowadays and that's not necessarily good. You know, we've got those people on TikTok. I love it. You're green. No, no, it's not. It's, it's literally not good. TikTok is like not a good thing. It's on um, respect. Um, <laughs> Like get rid of it. Get it. Yeah. See ya. But um, yeah, we've have, we have these people on there basically just taking passages out of context, um, and you know we that that comes from both sides, from different denominations, and and yeah. it's scary. It's really really scary to, to think about. Um, how do you personally, you know, study the Word of God, and what does your like intimate time yeah. with the Lord look like? Um, not as frequent as it should be. I think mm -hmm. that's the first thing I have to say. Um. What I do get up early enough and I finally have like the gumption and presence of mind to like not log into work and be like, hey, let's like take 15 minutes, 30 minutes and like actually, oh, like, um, hey, this is something I talked about with my therapist. This is great. This is like hot off the press from my therapy session. Ooh. I had like sizzling, man. Get the steak off the grill, man. It's literally, I had this mantra of like, I wasn't doing enough in my time with the Lord. And then that in itself became like a burden because like, I don't have enough time. I've got to do all these things. And it's like, it's so much. And my therapist was like, who told you that? You know? And I'm like, yo, yeah. So now for me, it quite literally looks like uh, right now I'm going through Ephesians with a buddy of mine. If I do find the time and I have the discipline, I'll go through a chapter mm. um, and I'll have um, usually either the enduring word app, I think it is, or like, um, there's something called Sono, Sonic Light through like the Plano Bible Chapel, basically like commentary on it. Yeah. And I'll kind of just like read a couple of verses like, oh, what's the commentary say? Okay, cool. A couple of verses commentary. And then trying to find something new, maybe um, asking the Lord to show me something new, because if I'm being honest, Ephesians has just been where I've landed a lot and I probably need to spread my wings and go to another book, but try to be your book, new. you know, that's, that's, that's all. Hate, this one's yeah. 
It's just Ephesians yeah. and James back and forth. <laughs> My <Not a> James. <laughs> oh, no, James. James but, is so harsh. You, know, you James, must be going through it, bro. I was about to say, James is when I like me to kick in the butt. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, this is right. But reading that and finding something new and then just kind of like ultimately it's, I mean, amazing. At the end of each one, I'm usually just reminded of like how much of a center I am and like how deeply in need of like a savior and grace I am. And then just being like extremely like thankful um, that Jesus did what he did on the cross. And then usually just ends with me being like, God, thank you so much. Like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Uh, I'm so broken. I need you. And what's crazy is, is it, it doesn't take long doing that, but that's usually like the best way to start. Like those days are infinitely better from multiple standpoints than my other days, but that's just kind of what it looks like. Yeah. That's, that's so real. I mean, honestly, I'm there with you too. I do so much studying sometimes, so much content, a lot of, you know, Unfortunately for me, I don't make funny content. <laughs> I just do a lot of teaching. So yeah, yeah. So my own personal time with the Lord, I'm like, I've been studying all week. I've been teaching all week. Like the last thing I want to do is like open up my Bible. Um, but yeah. one of the one of the ways that I have just like involved the Lord is um since I'm doing that studying and that teaching, like I'm like, I don't need more of that. I need more of just like let's hitch him on to some of the activities I'm doing in my everyday life. Yeah. You know? And so just finding communion with him. Um, while I'm driving to the gym, um, or while I'm at the gym, um, while I'm sharpening it, uh, like, oh, you know, it's funny. I, this is so dumb. I, yesterday, <laughs> fresh, fresh off the grill. Okay. Let's hear let's, let's take over. Let's hear it. <laughs> um, yesterday I went, uh, it was like 3am and I was really hungry. I didn't do meal preps this week. And, um, and I just like, I really wanted to go have a Big Mac. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and uh, that's great. And I went to go get a Big Mac and um, I have the McDonald's app. Shout out to the McDonald's app. Do you have the McDonald's yeah. app? No, I, I've heard that like the rules. You're like, I don't do poor people though. food. <laughs> no, I, I certainly do. It's just, <laughs> I, I do more like Whataburger, Chick-fil-A. Uh, do y'all have Whataburger in Florida? Um, no, <laughs> but I have tasted it. It is good. It's like it's McDonald's. So it's like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. But I, I went and I got the app and uh, with the app, you can get like a lot of free stuff. Like a lot of free stuff. Like I'm like, every restaurant should have an app like this. Like yeah. so much coupons. Um, and so there's buy one, get one. Like, so buy one, get get a Big Mac. So I got two Big Macs. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, Let's go. Um, and I was praying on the way to my like home. <laughs> Cause I was like, I was like, oh, I'm about to commit a heinous sin. Lord, right if now. you can, <laughs> please bless these Big Macs. <laughs> yes. If you can. I was literally in the car. Like I was like, I was like, God, you know, I know this is bad for my health. Like two Big Macs, you know, yeah. my cholesterol is just like fighting for its life. But I'm like, bless the food, God. And then also I was like, God, just like, please, you know, give me the hunger. Like when I feel when I was eating the fries and I was like, mm, God, these are so tasty. McDonald's fries are so good, dude. Oh, they are so good. so good. So good. And I was eating them and I was like, God, I just, I pray, Lord. So, so serious. Like I was like, I pray God that when I eat vegetables, it would taste this good. <laughs> like you yeah. can give me a tongue for, for just, uh, for vegetables. God, yeah. know, like this is so tasty and delicious. I'll never be able to run away from this. My yeah. whole life. I was like, again, I got to get fit. Like I need to get fit. Um, so just those little things are just like involving God and just like, what, what that's do you what think? I'm saying, bro. Is that's dumb. like, that's what it is. Like, that's literally, I, I found more, I don't even know what you would call it. It's so much more rewarding, like just interacting with God on the day to days. Then having to be like, okay, I've got, you know, which sometimes you just got to, you know, get down on your knees. I get it. And like, pray, yeah. but like this over like, Lord, you know, it's like, no, like I remember that like one of the most spiritual dudes I, I, I know was our assistant worship leader when I was in college at our church. And like, we would just like pray, you know what I'm saying? And from this guy, like so anointed, bro, you would expect like speaking in tongues types of, but he would just pray and be like, God, like, thank you for Chipotle. Like, honestly, <laughs> you know? And just like a very, what some people might think is like simple, but it's like, it's just like interacting with God. And I think that God really looks for th that personal reaction. Then this like drawn up, like, Lord, if I come to you and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, don't bring the dramatics, you know, just talk. One of the worst things ever, bro, that I just hate in Christianity, um, Christian culture, I would say, yeah. um, Western Christian culture is when people... <laughs> Pray for like, uh, well, try to evangelize to people who are working, like their mm -hmm. jobs in restaurants, 
oh my gosh, like now is not so time, home dog. You know, like like they are mid shift, and they can't go anywhere. Like you essentially imprison them, and so like they have to listen to you. Like that is just like one of those cringe things in Christianity. Like as soon as you said, you know, restaurants. Like I think of like you know these this Christian group of people after the service, they sit down at the table. The, the waiter comes up to them. They're so holy, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they're like, uh, just immediately right off the bat, hey, what's your name? Oh, uh, oh, I love to hear it. You know, we just came from... Yeah, yeah. It's just like, what do you think about Jesus? It's like, no, like, let them, like, order your food and let them go. Like, it's like they see that they have a tattoo. They're like, they're not saved. They're not saved. They need to know. No. So, oh, oh, piercings? Oh, yeah. we've got to talk to this person about Jesus. Like, they're going straight to hell. <laughs> you know, piercing. <laughs> God forbid. Yeah. Uh, like trapped they're like uh i don't really want to have this conversation and they have to be nice that's that's the sad part about it like they can't even be honest so it's like at that point like who is this helping like this is helping you more than it's helping them. it's literally them stroking the ego of like i shared the gospel today it's like yeah to your uber driver who couldn't i mean they can't leave the car like the drive you know (laughs) <laughs> they just jump out. I'm balled out, you know. I'm sure that's what they want to do. Like, yeah. it's it's just not the time. No, it's not. Oh, my gosh, bro. But you are just so awesome. I, like, I had told you before the podcast, like, I was like, if I lived anywhere near this guy, like, we would just be, like, amazing friends. We chumps, for sure. It's so funny. You're so funny, guys. So, please check out. Um, I wish this podcast could go longer, but please you know, check out <laughs> Josh Benson, uh, the rapper. Do you rap, by the way? I've never heard you rap. Yeah. So I, <laughs> that's what like that came from when I was in college, back to being, you know, an attention whore. Um, <laughs> I started like making rap music. I've got a couple songs on like Spotify and stuff, but it's just so criminally white, you know? Like, do you date their still up? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm going to have fun with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you went to text me and be like, what were you doing? Yeah. Max still up style. I wish R. <laughs> to Mag, man. Such a if that's the comparison, that's such a disgrace to Mag. <laughs> <laughs> Just such a gorgeous rest in peace. Um, but yes, yeah, guys, please go check out Josh and his TikTok, and hopefully he does get picked up for it. an SNL skit. Thing. Thing. Sunday night, like <laughs> finances. That's in the past. Like spotlight. That's where you need to be. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> You're like I'm ready. We'll talk about it. <laughs> I know I'm ready. ready. I got my just job, my close up. <laughs> Samuel, will you just pray for me? There's this set at the end of the road. They're filming a movie. I just want them to cast me as the <laughs> So if you could just pray for that. They- Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm charismatic. <laughs> you, you've got faith for both of us. <laughs> uh, but no, I believe it. I mean, uh, like you really honestly should be doing more and more. And, and I'm glad it's it's been successful. And, Thank um, you, man. And yeah, I, I can't wait to meet you in person one day, hopefully whenever I go to Dallas. But Again. But all right, guys. So thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And like I said, show Josh some love and tell him how, you, you know, his impact. Well, how his testimony has impacted you if it did. <laughs> if not, <laughs> Chris, Chris, if not, leave it to yourself. Just leave it to yourself. Just block him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on his page to block him. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for listening. And I'll, I'll see you next time on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Peace, baby.